I'm lucky enough as a watch YouTuber to get contacted by a number of brands to do reviews. I take a little bit of a look because I can't do them all. There is quite a large volume that, of requests that come in. So what I do is I take a bit of a look at a website, work out whether it's an interesting story to tell, the background of the watch, or whether I think that you guys will find it interesting or not. As you know, I am not a fan of homage brands or copy brands. So when I was contacted by this brand, Adistive, I immediately thought to myself, this isn't gonna be one that I wanna review. But I did go on their website and uh, as I expected, it was a lot of copies of Seiko watches, copies of Rolexes, even copies of Certina watches. But then I stumbled across this one. So I thought, you know what? Let's get one in, let's work out whether they are actually decent watches because the prices seem quite fair. So let's flip the camera around and dive straight in. Let's see what we have in this Addis Dive box. I don't know, this sounds like an amalgamation of perhaps a dive watch that Adidas would make. They did send this in for review. They say this is a waterproof plastic box that the watch comes in, but this is a very flimsy plastic. This is more like a dollar store version of a Pelican box, I would say. And there's no rubber seal or anything like that. I highly doubt that this would be waterproof or certainly waterproof at any depth other than perhaps just splash proof. I believe this is the manual for all of the Adis Dive watches because there we have one with a bezel. The The warranty card is sealed in here, although it is perforated down the center, which may, it reminds me of those films where they snap it to release the nuclear coat. It looks like that's how you'd have to get this plastic off. Also, there is a tool for adjusting the bracelet. This is a pin adjustment system. You would you push the pins through. Typically, I wouldn't adjust a bracelet with this because the chance of injuring yourself is quite high. I would use one of those things off Amazon where you essentially, it's a screw that you then tighten it like a little mini vice that pushes the pin out. But I did take one for the team and adjust it with this to see whether it could be done. The surprise to no one, I did end up pushing one of the pins through my thumb. So I did end up injuring myself. I would not recommend using this to try and adjust the bracelet. It will work, but if you're as clumsy as me, you're probably going to injure yourself. So why did I decide to review this watch? After scrolling through the, the copies of the Seiko watches, then I stumbled across this one and I was like, oh, okay, that's interesting. If you just saw this watch, you might think, okay, they're making a copy or a, a cheeky homage of a khaki field watch by Hamilton or maybe an IWC. But I think that this is probably one of the few watches on their website that is an actual homage because this design particularly the hands that I'm talking about, is similar or a nod to military history, RAF pilot watches in particular. I don't think they were World War II. I think it was more like Korean War, 19, late 1940s to perhaps the 1970s that these pilot watches were issued. But why I say that it's similar to that is because of the hands. This cut off our hand, this sort of snub-nosed hour hand, is a nod to those watches. I think there's a few companies that made them. IWC, certainly, I think, JLC, and a few others made them. So this was more of a military specification that they are homaging here instead of a specific watch. Although IWC do make one very similar to this. I won't uh, let them off totally scot-free there. So this is a 39 millimeter case watch. When I picked it out of the box, one of the things that strikes straight away is it is quite heavy. They say it's 134 grams on their website but after I adjusted it and then injured myself for my 7.2 inch wrist, it's about 130 grams. So it has got some weight to it. Probably to keep within the price range, the case is completely brushed all the way over, even the bezel. There is a few sharp corners on this. You can't tell on the wrist, but certainly there's not any advanced case finishing on the corners here. We do have sloped lugs as well, which do fit very nicely on the wrist. The bracelet, you don't need to see this in person to tell. You can probably tell straight from the studio lights here that it doesn't fit very well. You can see that the, the lugs overhang the bracelet, the fitted end links by quite some margin, maybe an extra mil. It's not a perfect fit. Perhaps this bracelet fits a few of their watches, but it is a solid bracelet. This isn't a pressed metal bracelet. Also the clasp, the clasp is pressed, but the mechanism is machined. And we sometimes don't see that on even some of the very expensive Citizen 
thousand watches it's a push button deployment it is a little bit crunchy to be fair but it, it does work and then they have their logo on the, the clasp there is also five layers of micro adjustment which again it's a little bit of a, a nod to Seiko that sometimes only include two on theirs their logo which is quite confusing to see on a field watch is a for dive goggles and then two spear guns crossed i guess to homage of skull and crossbones it does look weird but not as clumsy as when we move to the front and we can see the addis dive logo in cursive it looks very clumsy on there this would have looked much better with a, perhaps a circular logo or maybe even a mini version of those diver goggles i don't know but this would look perhaps better with a sterile dial to be perfectly honest here we can see the date with a red surround interestingly the date lines up very nicely here but on the renders on their website the date is crooked i don't know how that passed the qc on the website design company but it is crooked on their website but it is perfectly aligned in person also i don't believe those military watches had the 24 hour on the inside as well they just had the the prominent numbers as we can see here the um the 1 to 12 but this one also has the military time all of this is printed on there they say on the website that they're using bgw9 super luminova and to be fair it does have a half decent loom shot the watch is using the nh35a and when i put it on the time grapher it was getting some okay numbers with dial up but as soon as you put it on the, the dial side down it's uh, it gets a lot more lively we say that is the nh35a movement and that's not something specific to addis dive sometimes you get them out of the box and they're perfect but a lot of times they do str struggle with positional accuracy the timing accuracy in different positions but dial up it performs very well here it is on my 7.2 inch wrist it does fit nicely it's nicely balanced even though it is a slightly heavier watch fit and finish on here the flat sapphire crystal the alignment of the dial the fit and finish is is good on this that i can't see any qc issues on this on the assembly anyway the watch is considerably more waterproof than perhaps the case is it's got a screw down crown with a 200 meters water resistance it is a nice winding action as well and that's something that's a nod to the nh35a so what do i think is hard for me to argue a watch that is $139 with 20% off and is using the NH35A isn't good value for money even though I wouldn't particularly probably buy an Addis Dive watch just because I'm, I'm not a fan of some of the copies that they make this is a this is a solid watch for the money more importantly what did you think let me know in the comment section down below if you're new to the channel love it if you hit that subscribe button hit the thumbs up and the bell notification and I'll see you all next time on Casual Watch Reviews